So, thank you for coming. Uh, just a short question at the beginning. Anybody here who is not a German speaker, who doesn't speak German? Okay, um, if you want to, we can switch to German. Is that okay? Is it fine with the... With the okay. Also dann auch gerne in Deutsch. <laughs> Macht das Ganze ein bisschen einfacher. Um, genau. Schön, dass ihr hier seid zum Vortrag KI und das Ende der Welt, zumindest wie wir es kennen. Ähm, als kleinen Einstieg habe ich ähm, so ein bisschen eine Hollywood-Aufbereitung von der Zukunft mit KI äh, mal mitgebracht. Is this in I just ask, are you English? Uh, I'm not okay, so we we'll switch to English, no problem. Is this with sound? Oh, the sound doesn't work. Okay. Well, if it doesn't, we can just uh, skip. It's just uh, no problem. Okay, let's just skip it. Doesn't matter. So um, you you probably all know uh, many uh, Hollywood films about AI, and you just saw uh, Stephen Hawking talking about the topic. Um, so when we talk about artificial intelligence, what do we mean? Like, what is uh, intelligence really? What are we talking about? And the problem is that nobody really knows. So science hasn't come up with a agreed upon definition. Um, what intelligence is. And so it's a bit problematic to talk about artificial intelligence. Um, there was a famous guy called Alan Turing and he came up with an idea, um, being that nobody knows what intelligence is, but we all agree that humans are intelligent. So if humans are intelligent and we can't distinguish a machine from a human, then the machine must be intelligent, whatever that means. So this is the way he came up with the Turing test. At the time, he defined it as a chat uh, competition or chat test or, or a talk to test. But this is essentially the idea behind it, right? If we can't distinguish a human from a machine, the machine has to be intelligent. And um, yeah, it turned out to be some form of joke in the um, AI community, being that whatever problem we define as to be an AI problem, uh, once it's solved, um, people decide that it's not an AI problem anymore. For instance, um, in the 50s, 60s, 70s, they said that uh, chess is a very complicated game. And in order to be able to play chess, um, the machine would have to be like very intelligent, like strategic, strategic planning and everything. So if a machine could ever play chess, um, then this surely would be an intelligent machine, right? So IBM came up with um, uh, blue, what's it name? I uh, forgot. <laughs> and deep blue, thank you. And as soon as uh, people realized how deep blue works, um, they said, ah, no, that's not intelligence. That's not what we meant. And then um, they said, okay, uh, language. Like, language is a very, you know, uh, hard thing with subtleties and, and all uh, ambiguities and jokes and all of that, uh, irony and stuff. And if, if we can get. Um, a machine to understand human language, then this surely needs to be intelligent, right? So again, IBM came up with, with Watson this time to play Jeopardy, and alas, uh, people said, ah, no, okay, this is like, it's a narrow form of intelligence, but it's not what we meant when we said artificial intelligence. And <laughs> may that destroy, um, uh, Tay, sorry, um, qualify. And uh, the latest um, frontier that fell was the game Go. So uh, people said, okay, there are more um, possibilities um, of, of the board uh, than there are stars in the universe. So if a machine can play Go, then it surely must be intelligent. And the same. So now we have a machine that can do that, and still we don't, so, we don't say it's, it's what we understand at, as a, a general uh, intelligence. Okay, so where are we today? Well, as I just said, we have intelligence, so it's doing some things, but it's not uh, intelligent in a general sense. So the AI we have today lacks empathy, has poor impulse control, has problems with planning and foresight, poor behavioral constraints. Um, 
So actually that is the textbook definition of a psychopath. Maybe that's the reason that people think that we will end in war. Like this is a, the, the famous movie plot. Everybody knows the documentary, right? Uh, Terminator. And um, th this is sure how it's, how it's going to be, right? Well, um, I mean, it's a great movie plot and uh, it's very, very intense. But um, is it realistic in any way, conceivably? Well, if you think about um, how we compare against machines, um, like we would in a war. Um, our uh, the neural neurons, the biological neurons, operate at 200 hertz. That's how fast the, the individual neurons in the, in the brain can switch. Um, well, <laughs> that, that's what we have today um, uh, as CPUs. Um, then the, the electro, electro, electronical signal in the nerve travels with about 120 meters per second. Meaning that if you want, for instance, if you want to throw a ball, you have to give the order to let go of the ball when your hand is still there. Right? Because in the, in the time your, your hand makes ma that movement, um, you, you cannot wait until your hand is here for your brain to, to send the signal to let go of the ball because it would be too late. You have to, when you make that throwing uh, movement, you have to, the, your brain has to send the signal to let go of the ball when your hand is still here. That's why, we, why it's so hard to learn to walk, you know, thro throw balls, play tennis, do anything like that, because your, your brain essentially has to anticipate what is going to happen and send the um, according um, um, signals and, and uh, commands when it hasn't happened yet. So we, as humans, we can't wait until the ball is here. We have to decide what to do before the ball is here in order to be able to make the movement. In contrast, obviously, to the machine. Um, this is actually, this is very interesting. If, if we say that um, um, the operation is, is comparable, which, which is currently not, because we, with, a, with a machine we simulate in, in a neuron but if, if it was comparable, when, you, for, when for you one second passes because of that vast difference, for the machine, 63 years pass. Right? So if, if we assume it, we operate at the same speed um, of, of uh, thinking, then uh, when one second for you passes, the machine has 63 years time to make the decision what to answer, for instance. Or how to dodge the bullet. <laughs> in the war. Um, and if you, if you come to, to actually like combat units, uh, to produce a combat unit, like a human soldier, it takes about 60 years, 16, sorry, years. And uh, in a factory, it takes about several hours. So if we ever uh, get into a situation where we have a war against machines, there's not chance that we will win. So I just want to make that very clear. Another uh, comparison. Um, in factories, uh, like in uh, a couple of decades ago, uh, ago um, we had these cages that made uh, sure that uh, human workers weren't harmed by the clunky robots. Today, robots can uh, analyze the human and anticipate its movements before the mov movements become conscious for the human. So the human doesn't even know that he wants to make a certain movement and the machine can re already react to that. So that's uh, the time difference we're talking. And of course, also, I mean, it makes uh, for a nice foe if the, if the enemy is, uh, has roughly human size and looks like a human, uh, robot-wise. But um, if you want to win against humanity, it absolutely doesn't make any sense. Like, if you want to um, win against humanity, you create robots that are like nanobots. You can't shoot at them, right? How, how do you kill that? So uh, you dissolve uh, structure, you dissolve mm, humans uh, on a nanobot scale which is that we don't want the war, okay? As soon as we get to the war, game's over already. Uh, this is the reason that famous uh, people like Elon Musk, uh, when in 2017 things got a bit hot with uh, Korea, with uh, North Korea, he uh, twittered that uh, we shouldn't be concerned about North Korea, we should be concerned about AI, because in the end, machines will, will, will win. So, now I want to um, bust a couple of myths. 
Um, some people think that only uh, Luddites um, worry about AI. Um, and as you just saw, Stephen Hawking, uh, Elon Musk, Bill Gates, uh, many famous researchers think that AI should be worried about. Um, the people like with uh, Terminator think that um, the problem is that AI might turn evil. But this is actually not the problem. The problem is if, as soon as we are not 100% aligned, it's a problem. So, and, and I'll get back to that later. And of course, not robots are the main concern. We don't need a body representation. Um, as, soon, as soon as the AI is connected to the internet, it can just you know, shut us down or do whatever it wants. So here's a joke. Um, the most, you're the most advanced robot. And out of my fear of the future, I order you to destroy all the human-created unfriendly intelligences. Soon, um, moments before all humans were killed. <laughs> so the problem is, um, what does the AI understand if we give it an order? For instance, if I say, make me happy, okay, what does it mean to make me happy? Um, it could mean, you know, create, create a matrix and have me be the rock star, uh, while all other people are simulated and I'm the only real person in there, or uh, just, which is much more efficient, uh, just um, put my brain into serotonin, right? So I'm happy. <laughs> but this is surely not what we want. So the problem here is, um, and this is uh, already was uh, talked about in the Greek methodology, King Midas, um, if we make a wish, we, sure, we must make sure that this wish is what we actually want. So King Midas, for instance, he wanted that everything he touched would turn into gold. The problem was that he couldn't eat anymore because his food turned into gold. He couldn't drink anymore because his, you know, wine turned into gold. And eventually also he touched his daughter, which promptly turned into gold. So this surely wasn't what he intended. So this is the, the same thing essentially could happen to us. Whatever we wish could be granted to the letter. Um, if we think, if we say, okay, uh, we just need to teach the AI common sense and morality. Well, <laughs> turns out uh, that common sense is not as common as we think, and morality is a very different thing for uh, each each of us, and uh, also for people living in China or Russia or whatever in the world. So, um, as long as um, philosophy doesn't provide us with a flawless and consistent morality, which it hasn't so far, this is not the way to go. This won't help us. Okay, let's talk about how intelligent is an AI going to be? Well, if you take the intelligence staircase, so to say, and you have an, an ant and a chicken and a monkey, and here you have the humans, and on that staircase you have all humans from the, uh, the, the dumbest guy in the village to Albert Einstein, right? So all, all on the same level. And then you take an AI and you let the AI improve itself. You let the AI, which, which we call seed AI, and then uh, ex intelligence explosion. Okay, so the AI improves its own hardware and improves its own software, and within, you know, minutes, days, months, whatever, you have that. Okay, we can't even fathom what, what an AI that would be in, as intelligent as that would want to do. We, we, we have no way of understanding. We, we have no way of, of forecasting, of telling. Um, and if the AI wanted something, uh, it could just happen that we'd be in the way. So it doesn't need to be, as I said, it doesn't need to be um, bad or, or uh, malicious. It, it doesn't need to, to hate us. So there's an example. If we want to build a road and there's an ant hill where we want to build a road, we don't hate ants. We just want to build the roads. Gun goodbye until right so the same could happen to us if the ai want to do something anything doesn't matter and we we happen to be in the way well bad for us no no harm uh, no bad feelings intended right so um yeah and the question is when will that happen so here is the point where we make where we create a real general AI that can improve itself and then we have that um, intelligence explosion and we just we are we, ha we are here okay we don't know where we are we don't know if this is in one year in five year in 50 years whatever it we don't know it will happen at some point so um, all of the scientists agree that this will happen they just disagree on when 
But in the meantime, I want to talk about something different, um, which is, you know, AI becomes self-aware and rebel against human control, and AI becomes advanced enough to control unstoppable swarms of killer robots. Okay, this is the time I now want to talk about. <laughs> um, Okay, essentially, um, we, I, I made a short graph, so we are here today, um, tomorrow, whatever that means, one year, two years, and then short term, whatever that means. So I'm, I'm very vague here because I, I, I'm not really interested when it actually will happen, I just say that it will happen at some point, whether this are five years or 10 years or 20, doesn't matter for me. And then at some point we will have, as I just said, autonomous um, artificial super intelligence. So, and we are here. So what's the state of AI today? So. Okay, didn't go exactly as planned. Um, AI today works more or less, but still has some flaws. For instance, it has problems di distinguishing between um, puppets and chicken wings. Uh, puppies, sorry. So this is a very hard problem for, for AI. What, what is a chicken wing and what is a puppy? And um, today we get many interesting uh, news, like AI um, is better uh, finding cancer than humans. Well, it turns out that's actually not, not such good news because pigeons are better than finding cancer than humans. So if you take a pigeon and train it with MRI scans for 15 days, uh, it beats human doctors. So it's actually not that hard to achieve, right? And th this is where we are with AI today. Um, and still we have some problems. We already have some problems. And the main problem is bias. What is bias? Actually bias, um, we don't have, the, we have problems with bias actually without AI. So this is a racist soap dispenser. So as you just saw, for a, for a white hand, it gives you soap, but for a black hand, it doesn't. And uh, the, obviously this hasn't to do anything with AI, it just, um, it just exemplifies what I mean with bias. So the people who created that soap dispenser didn't think about black hands, right? They, they just, you know, they, they tried it probably and it worked for them, so they assumed it will work for everyone, which it doesn't. So, and the same thing will happen with AI. As we, as we take AI and put it in everyday, um, you know, uh, things and, and put the algorithms everywhere, the, you will see a lot of that. You will see that, you know, things doesn't wor don't work for, for certain types of people. For instance, uh, the Google Translate. So there's a problem that in, in the Turkish language, there's no, uh, no genders. So everything is no, no neutral. And in the English language, there is no neutral. So if you translate, he is a babysitter and she is a doctor into Turkish, and then the exact same thing you translate back, the algorithm has to decide uh, what the output's gonna be, okay? You, there's no it, so you can't say it's a babysitter, that doesn't work. So you have to decide whether she or he, and the algorithm, you know, um, using um, heuristics and statistics and uh, bias, essentially, decides that she, that the babysitter is more, more likely to be a she, and the doctor is more likely to be male. And, and this is, you know, I, I mean, that's not, that's not too bad, right? It's, it's just a translator, so it's not too bad. But um, it's just an example of what we will see more of. For instance, if you search, so this, this is fixed now, but if you searched for three black teenagers, you saw uh, mugshots, and if you searched for three white teenagers, you essentially got stock photos. Also clearly biased. Um, today, in America, if you um, apply for a loan, you, um, so the person in front of you won't make the decision. An algorithm will make the decision and tell the person what he should tell to you. Okay, so this, this is actually, uh, this is happening today. This is not in two years or in five years. This is the state of today. If you apply for a loan, the algorithm will take into account where you come from, what your name is, where you went to school, and based on that, make a decision about whether you get a loan or not. And uh, I didn't know that, but um, in the US, they have a system where they, f where they um, um, 
try to figure out who's the worst performing teachers and then they um, they let go of them. So the, the, the lowest performing 5% of all teachers are, um, you know, uh, essentially fired. And so this happened for a teacher who was uh, nominated by her... Um, um, I don't remember the word, but the guy who's in charge at the school, the principal. And um, so he, he said that she's a very good teacher and then the system decided that she could, should get fired. And th th this is a problem because uh, the, as, uh, this is the reason that the, the general popula population learned of the fact, because this is so stark, you know, contrast. But um, this, this happens on a regular basis. The, there's a system that's a black box that you can't look into and that decides whether you get fired as a teacher or not. And this is today, not sometime in the future, today in America. And also, um, because there are, the judges have so much work to do and uh, they can't cope with their workload, they have a system that supports them. And they, this system makes a suggestion about the length of the prison sentence and about whether you should get a bailment and to what amount. And also that system is, is an AI system that's uh, learned from past cases and based on your gender, your name, uh, the place where you live, um, the place where you went to school and who your parents are and stuff like that, um, the system decides how, how long you will go to prison. And if you're a judge, you can rule against that. You can overthrow the decision, um, but then you have to give a you have to you have to a reason. You have to give a reason why why you did that. So very few judges actually do that. So essentially, uh, AI decides how long you go to prison in America the, the, today. <laughs> and the problem is that AI is a black box, so you can't you can't question it. You can't look into it. You can't say, why do you come up with that number? Or why do you come up with that uh, suggestion? It, it just, it happens, right? And you have, you can either agree with it or um, you can ignore it, but you can't question it. Yeah, and that's, that leads to the next problem. Um, do you obey technology? Like, um, who of you obeys technology? Okay. If you're driving a car, <laughs> who is ignoring the traffic light? Nobody, right? Um, five years ago or ten years ago, uh, you would, if you wanted to go somewhere where, where, you, where you've never been, you would look it up on the map. Today, I get in the car, like myself, I get in the car and say, okay, bring me to my holiday. And I don't, like, it's a thousand kilometers and I never looked in the map even once. I just totally trust um, the GP. Uh, the the um, the, uh, the system that, that leads me there, right? And the next thing is that I don't even have to drive anymore. So the, the system drives for me. So I, I totally, this is what I want to say is, this is a slippery slope. Like we, we start with convenience and then eventually we end with life support. So the system become, we, we depend on the system in such a strong way that without the system, like if, if our children don't learn how to drive, and, and I, I um, think that th this will be the case, then if, if there's a breakdown, if the satellites crash or something, um, then they won't be able to go anywhere, right? And I mean, this is just driving, but this also happens um, for other th important things. Like um, in, in my local village, there's a pharmacy that just recently installed such a robot. So they don't have to go and grab things from the... From the um, uh, for, from the storage, so it, it stores um, the items and it's very efficient and it does it all by itself. But if the power breaks down, my pharmacist cannot give me my medicine, right? Because she doesn't know where it is. She, she doesn't, I, I mean, she even told me so. <laughs> she has no clue. So the system is fully autonomous um, and she doesn't need to interfere with it, which is great. But as soon as it breaks down, there's no power. She can't give me my medicine. And um, also with many more like life decisions, um, decisions that are important for your life on a, on a very, on a big deal. Like, um, who are you going to date? Like if, if you um, rely on Tinder and, and all of those um, platforms, they make a suggestion. And of course you can choose, like you choose 
between the top three or five or top ten. Um, but what if your perfect mate is, uh, is, is in top 100? As you know, nobody goes to page three in Google, right? So if you aren't the, the, the top match, or at least in the top three, you're not going to find her or him. So this is, this is a life decision um, where AI supports you. But you don't, you, you can't, you don't understand the algorithm. You don't know what the decisions are. So these are um, companies that make the decisions, and actually not in your own best interest. Because usually, what what you do is that you pay them by the month, which means the longer you are looking for your perfect partner, the longer they they'll get money from you. So they have no interest at all in giving you the best match on the on the first spot, because then you pay once. And also for jobs, where are you going to work at? So LinkedIn makes jobs suggestions. Where, where should you work at? And even on the other, uh, on the employer side, they, they get a, a bunch of applications and then LinkedIn or you know, other algorithms help them decide who to, who to uh, employ. So there's a, a lot of um, um, algorithms and, and situations where AI is already making the decision today. And we don't understand those decisions. And if there is bias at play, and uh, you have you, you have the wrong name, or you went to the wrong school, or the wrong gender, or whatever uh, ethnici ethnicity, um, then um, yeah, bad for you. Okay, this is today. Like it's you know it's serious, but not too bad in a way, um, because. As the intelligence of the AI increases, um, errors are going to be more severe. They have gonna, they're going to have more severe consequences. And we're going to face unemployment. This is already talked about in the media. So um, what I want to say is that, for instance, if you have self-driving cars and the, self, the, the AI in the self-driving car makes an, uh, an error, then maybe you die, right? Um, Probably the AI is better at driving than, than you or than most um, humans, so the, there will be less casualties with AI driving. This is a, a broadly accepted um, um, thing, statement, but um, still every error that is made could potentially end a human life. And yeah, robots will take our, our um, jobs. So in 10 years, uh, we won't need any more drivers, any more cab drivers, any more whatever. This is already um, partly happening, like Amazon already has a lot of workers um, in, in retail. So as you just said, uh, as you just read, um, with 50% uh, chance, um, AI will outperform all humans, or humans in all tasks, which means there are no, essentially no jobs left with a 50% chance. And um, we had a similar situation, uh, situation already um, 18, um, um, 1811 um, to 17, when um, the loom... The me mechanized looms were created, and uh, the Luddites um, started to destroy them. And what essentially happened what was that a lot of soldiers were sent to, you know, uh, end the the revolt, and that cr destroying a mechanized loom was um, penalt uh, w was uh, penalized with death. So people were killed for breaking machines, and perhaps this will happen again. Um, like we have 200 years ago, like 90% of all humans were working in agriculture, meaning, you know, farming and, and, uh, herding. And today it's like less than 1%. And we, we had 200 years to accommodate to the situation, to that job loss. Like it happened before, right? So, uh, machines took over human jobs. It happened before. Maybe we can just cope with that again. Um, but we'll see. We don't know yet. And what 
were so and also in between um there were um like the french um revolution and stuff so um very drastic changes happened in between and it could be that those you know drastic things might be in the future for us as well some of that we already see for instance the the amount of money or the amount of property owned by the top uh, one uh, zero one percent in us um is um, soon to be more than the rest owned by the 90% of the bottom of the US. So this, this, switch, this, this, this crossover is going to happen. And um, yeah, the, in the income also is increasing at the sea level the most, which means that um, jobs, uh, we, we, we're going to we're gonna have less jobs and fewer people the, the ones with the, with the machines essentially are going to decide what's going to happen. And also there's another point, which is that um, jobs are a form of identification for humans. If you lose, like there's this um, dating site in Germany where you don't see the name, you only see the job. So which means that the job essentially is more important than the name for that, according to that dating, dating site. Um, and if you lose your job, if you say um, unemployed, well, who is going to date you, right? And another thing that's co coming up probably in, in the short term, if we have AI that is very powerful. So as you can see, as, um, as the intelligence goes up, so goes the severity of, of the, the problems. Um, if we have more intelligent AI, uh, so as I said, the criticali criticality increases because um, the how's the saying um the the more power the more um damn it yes thanks <laughs> the greater the power with great power comes great responsibility that's what i wanted to say thanks um and so the same happens with ai ai gets more powerful and uh yeah the the, the worst case scenarios get get more problematic um any idea when the first lethal autonomous weapon came up so a weapon that can decide on its own who it's going to kill without a human you know interfering um five years ago who thinks five years ago 10 years ago 20 years ago 100 years ago 200 years ago <laughs> actually it was um very early because it's the landmine the landmine i mean it's it's not uh, you know, it's not intelligent in any sense, but it decides who it's going to kill. Like if you step on it, you're dead, <laughs> essentially. But the but if you're if you're um, friend, if you're the wrong person and you step on it, you're still dead. So it's it decides on its own who it's going to kill, and we're going to see more of that, only um, um, with better. Um, distinctiveness so with better decisions like we already have drones that do um, uh, go through the air and and um, have a look at, at what's happening at the ground then we have AI systems that support that just bring stuff but we also have systems that are armed that can shoot at people and we're going to see more of that and even um, in different dimensions that we used to so this is a project that's happening in, in Israel right now. They create a, a robot that's essentially flying and has a, um, um, a poison uh, injection with it. So it, it flies to wherever it thinks and it can inject um, some you know, amount of deadly poison that usually kills humans. And you can't, as I said earlier, you can't shoot that. You can't wear a Kevlar vest against that, right? So there's no way you can defend against that. Um, this video was created um, before the, uh, some uh, UN convention and what it shows is a drone that's flying and that targets, in that case, um, uh, a demo, uh, a crash dummy, so to say, and it has three grams of um, explosive, so it doesn't even have a... It doesn't even have a um, uh, a bullet or something it's just the explosive and it targets the dump the, the in that case the crash test dummy on its own so you can say you can give it and you can this hasn't been built on a large scale 
So this is no weapon that you can buy, but you can see that all we need is there. We have the drones, we have the cameras, we have the face recognition, we have the explosives. So every, anybody who's, who's good enough can build that. And um, you can build that en masse. You can build that for like $10 and tell it, kill everybody with a beard, kill everybody, anybody who's black, kill anybody who's female, kill anybody, you know, who you don't like. So you, you can program these things. And this is actually a very real thing because um, right now in America, thanks, right now in America, um, you have um, somebody sitting on the drone to, to actually enable the kill, so to say. So, so there, there's still a human in the loop. But uh, we have 1,500 people per month pe being killed in, in March um, 2020. Uh, 2017. So th th this is a substantial amount of people. And uh, this was in Syria and uh, USA is not even in war with Syria. Right? They just kill these people because they think these are terrorists or potential terrorists. And, you know, if you think about that and combine it, then it's a terrifying um, outlook. Outlook. Then you can enable AI-based surveillance. So this is from the movie Batman, if anybody saw it. Um, but this is already happening large scale in China. And even, um, even the thing that this is going to, so you get a rating and that rating influ um, you know, it has impact on your daily life. How you can commute, uh, which tram you can take, uh, you get surve surveilled, surveilled and a lot of data is, is collected about you. And another thing is that AI can influence. So if, if you talk to 30 people and 30 people tell you the same thing, for instance, that, you know, uh, should, uh, whatever, vote for Donald Trump, for instance, um, then you're likely going to be influenced. Not everybody, but some percentage of people is going to be influenced. We, we, are, we are hurt uh, animals, so to say. So if, if a lot of your peers tell you that they like a certain thing or dislike a certain thing, it's going to influence you. And if those peers are actually virtual and AI and not real, and maybe you don't know because you're chatting, you're only, you know, Skyping, chatting um, in, in forums or on Facebook or whatever, you're going to be influenced still. And as we saw, this has happened in the US already. So this is not fiction anymore. <laughs> this probably has happened already. Um, which... Uh, leads to Vladimir Putin saying, whoever becomes the leader in AI will become the ruler in the world. So this, this is something that guy has said, and it's maybe frightening. And you can have AI-based cyber war, which means that, um, so if you have an AI that is intelligent enough, um, then it can hack into whatever system it wants. So the, the, the biggest um, bank, um, Right, rate that's been uh, undertaken wasn't undertaken um, in the real world, but was undertaken virtually. So the Bank of Bangladesh was um, uh, got 80 million dollars um, that were taken from their virtual systems by hackers. And if you think that that AI systems could do that much better than humans, then you know no systems secure anymore. Okay, um, I just talked about a lot, a lot about the bad things that could happen. And I don't like, we have a startup, we create AI to, to test software. So I'm, I'm not against AI. I just think there's a lot of good that can come from AI, but the good we just accept, right? We, we're grateful, but we don't need to warn that soon we're going to have such and such. Um, we, we need to warn, we need to be aware of the bad things that could potentially happen. This is why I give this talk. But there are also a lot of good things which I want to come to. Um, so this, um, so 99% of every uh, species on earth is now extinct and maybe we're going to be extinct at some time as well. And um, the, the problem is with AI, there's, well, that slide was misput. Um, there's no opt out. So the thing is, um, if, if you as Germany say uh, we don't want to take part in AI because it's so dangerous, well, uh, the other people are going to, to do it anyway. Russia, China, US, they, they're going to do it um, and, and create AI. Yeah, but as I said, um, there are also uh, benefits. For instance, higher productivity, 
uh, fewer human errors, as I said earlier, with the cars, it's probably a good idea to let AI drive cars because we will have less casualties and we get better decisions overall. We, we, we just have potentially individual bad decisions, but overall we probably get better decisions. Um, we could get, so this is a potential, we could get better societies, um, we solve war, we could end hunger, we could end diseases um, with AI. And essentially, we could get immortality and uh, space explorations like in the movies, like, you know, total science fiction. This is possible. AI could give us that. And we, we, we also, we need that. Because, for instance, in, the, uh, in, in Nigeria, um, the World Economic Forum said that with today's systems, like wh what is in place today, to create um, the amount of doctors to reach, like, a European level, uh, would take 300 years. So with existing, existing systems, without creating new schools, and without creating new universities, it would take 300 years to get all of those doctors. Um, with AI, we could have that in five years or in 10. You could have an AI that uh, makes a diagnose and says, okay, this guy has whatever, uh, whatever disease he has, right? And just uh, um, says, okay, he needs that medicine. Possibly. So, yeah, as I said, um, we also could get to immortality. And um, for those who, of you who think it will happen in 50 years or in 100 years and it doesn't matter to you, uh, things are changing and fast. Don't believe me? Well, in 1997, um, you said that you shouldn't get into strangers' cars uh, and you shouldn't, get, you shouldn't meet people from the internet. Today, we summon strangers from the internet to get into their cars. My mom told me to, need to not sit too close um, uh, in front of the TV because it's bad for my eyes. Well, today... <laughs> um, you probably know all about that graph, um, which is that... Um, you know, we have an exponential curve, so it's doubling essentially uh, every time or every year, and we we are badly wired to understand what that means. So, if if you compare the calculation power per second um, to that to the Lake Michigan, um, then this is what is going to happen. And you know, um, you have that amount of calculations, and and you don't even see it on the bottom, right? You the, you you can't recognize it and it fills at the end it fills very fast so let me give you just that again so th this is what exponential growth means you don't recognize it until it's too late so if you say that by 25 uh, 2025 we have ai to be as good as intelligent as humans and and you could Put that anywhere like if you say it's 2050 i don't care so i don't care about the exact numbers i just want to give you an impression what that means then uh, one year earlier it's only half the power and two years earlier it's one third the power and three years earlier it's one eighth the power and today it's 128th the power which you know could already be the case i don't know which means um, on the human level intelligence station, when we say AI is arriving, well, it won't stay there. As soon as it's as intelligent as we, the next second it's more intelligent. Okay, um, and if it comes, like if everything works out in the best possible way, if we have an AI that is as intelligent and still does what we want, what would we want? Like, we are immortal, uh, we don't have any diseases, we don't have any war, we don't have, like, we don't need to work. What are you going to do with your life? Then AI has to give us the answer, right? Also. Okay, so this has essentially been my talk. Um, now, what can you do, or why, why do I give the talk? Um, because w what we already saw in the init um, is that you need to cultivate suspicion. So if you have an algorithm that tells you something, who to mate, who to, who to, uh, who to, where, where to employ, where, where to whatever, whatever to do, um, that you should not blindly trust the algorithm. Okay, even if it's an algorithm, it's still going to have bias, it's still going to have errors. Scrutinize. Um, 
And yeah, just because we don't understand which biases are in the system doesn't mean that there are none. Ethics essentially is very complicated. Human ethics, as we understand them, is very, very complicated. And AI does not give us a get of ethics free card. Okay, we still need to solve the hard problems ourselves. AI doesn't do that for us. Um, so if, if you think this is uh, essentially a good idea to tell others, <laughs> then you can. So th these are some um, institutions that um, are um, working on those hard problems with AI. And you can raise awareness and you can contribute. Now, for me, um, as I already said, we are a startup. Um, we use AI to test software. So if you uh, happen to have software your own, you may, be, you may want to check us out because we use AI to find uh, problems in your code. Um, if, you wanna, if you want to dive deeper into that, um, there's a blog that's called Wait But Why, and it's, it's very much recommended. So it has very many interesting, um, many of the pictures that you saw were from that blog, actually. So um, I would recommend uh, reading that, but it's very long, so <laughs> it takes time. Um, there are some movies, uh, Animatrix, for those of you who know Matrix. So Animatrix is uh, the movie that explains how it how it came to be, how, what happened, such that we had the matrix, and uh, Transcendence by Johnny Depp. And if you like to read, then there's uh, Origin by Dane Brown, or if you like it um, a bit funny, there's The Quality Land from Mark Overkling. Okay, that's essentially my talk. Uh, thanks for coming, thanks for listening. Please give me a good uh, grade <laughs> if you liked it. <laughs> now, are there any questions? So in the in so first of all, um, so the question was, uh, what is AI uh, today based on? Um, and most of so there are different possibilities, but most of what we call AI today is actual neural networks. But but not all of it. So there are, for instance, genetic algorithms, and there are. Um, um, symbolic AI, so, so uh, problem solvers, um, where you handcraft the AI, as it just said. But most of what we use today is neural networks, which means that this is statistics. Because neural networks is essentially statistics, just in a way that humans don't understand it anymore. Yes? Behörden, die sich äh, um kümmern, dass nicht alle Algorithmen tatsächlich auf den Menschen losgehen. So the question was, uh, should we regulate how, uh, whether algorithms are, are um, released on humankind, so to say? And um, funny enough, uh, the DSGVO, uh, the DSGVO, um, Datenschutzgrundverordnung, um, already made uh, some steps in that regard. So I don't know if you read the actual uh, text, but it says that you can request that a human looks at your case. So th these, there are already steps on the way. So you, you can, if, if, for instance, you are whatever, um, you, you can request that a human takes a look at your specific case. In the examples with a loan, you could say, okay, I don't trust the AI, I want a human to do that. that and yeah, you can request that. Um, but for many companies, um, you don't even know where they use AI uh, in the background. And um, also there's much to be done still. Like, the, you know, we, we, want, uh, we want more research, we want more people that are aware, aware of the problem, that don't trust blindly. Um, stuff like that. So there's still much to be done. Yes?
So the question being, um, uh, is this uh, teach probably with uh, implications on the on the universities? Anybody want to answer that? Okay, so I think, um, so in my experience, it's not. <laughs> so um, all those implications uh, for, the, like the big implications for humanity and for society, as far as I know, are not taught and talked about, which uh, is also a good idea to, to bring that to universities. Yes? with machine learning. I mean, this is really the different end. Most of all, from my impression, it focuses completely on the left side of the brain. It's always analytical. Mm -hmm. Speaking, um, chess playing, mm -hmm. but um, intelligence is very diverse. It's also on the right side of the brain, especially the interaction between left and right side of the brain. Are you aware of any definition of intelligence that takes that into account? So, am I aware of a definition that takes um, the left side of the brain, so to say, the uh, the, the right side of the uh, right side of the brain into account? Um, so, I'm not aware of a, of a scientific definition, but um, in especially so. Another thing is that um, the the field has been uh, broadened, and um, for psychology, for instance, and they they recognize that intelligence as a term doesn't cut it, and there are like emotional intelligence and and stuff like that, so subtleties. Um, but this is mostly, as far as I know, um, disregarded by the computer science uh, guys. So. Um, no, I'm not. I mean, yes, in a way, I'm aware, for instance, of emotional intelligence, but uh, I'm not aware of systems that take that into account specifically. So people try to come up with systems that act human-like. I don't know if you if you um, saw the Google uh, Duplex um, um, presentation. So if if not, you should watch it. It's it's, it's scary. Um, there's um, a machine talking on the phone uh, to to um, people and and it, it's making human noises like it's it's um, and pauses and stuff so it it really tries to get across that it's human as I said earlier we also have that in chatbots because a chatbot is so fast it could instantly answer but people that recognized um, that a chatbot that gives a, a direct answer doesn't um, doesn't appear to be human. So what they did is they programmed the chatbot to wait and then answer so that people don't instantly realize that it's a chatbot. So it's it's taken in, into account in some ways, but not specifically as far as I know. Welcome. Yes? There are always positives and negatives to each and every technology that has been can, and it will for sure with the AI also. So what can we do in the sense like, okay, uh, of course I will, um, I will agree with scrutinizing each and every algorithm that we come up with, but in a global picture, irrespective of each and every country, is there any organization that we should focus on, or maybe that humans should build a for, or an organization which, uh, which has an irrespective notion of uh, in which way should the bots be built or this should not be allowed okay this cannot actually happen in a place where humans live or something so the question was whether there is um, a, a national or global institution that regulates such things and that uh, people can can talk to. And as far as I know, there's not. So there's AI, uh, Open AI, uh, which has been founded by, um, among others, by Elon Musk. And uh, this, this is concerned with that. And there are some researchers that try to come up with a like a European institution, like a CERN for for uh, research on on. Uh, subatoma particles and physics they want to create something european wise uh, to 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 research ai but as far as i know it, it hasn't happened yet so uh, the answer is no so you have to you have to to go to one of these okay any more questions okay so thank you for your time thank you for listening i hope it was interesting and uh, yeah hope to see you again